This is part three. So it's day four of the repair. And what I have planned for today is to get the timing belt covers taken off, position cylinder one at top dead center on the compression stroke, and hopefully remove the timing belt. This is the state of the engine on day four. This is what I'm hoping to get to today. This cover and also this lower cover. And then this belt in here is the timing belt. I'm gonna start with the upper timing belt cover right here. Gotta set my ratchet to loosen. So I got the right timing belt cover off and now I'm gonna do the left. I'm gonna start on the lower timing belt cover. It looks like I might have to remove this crankshaft pulley right here to get this cover off. Cause I think it goes all the way around. So I've got this tool hooked into the crankshaft pulley and I can hold it up there at the handle. But what that's gonna do is hold the crankshaft while I undo the nut on the end there. So I finally got the uh, crank bolt out and this thing was stuck. I mean, really stuck on there. I had to get about a four foot length of pipe to add to my 18 inch breaker bar to get enough torque to break it. And then I also had the help of my neighbor to help me hold the crankshaft still. Now I'm gonna try and remove this uh, crankshaft pulley. This is the crank bolt, and I'm still gonna need this to turn the crankshaft because I'm gonna fit a socket on the end of this and then I can spin the crankshaft. But so that this doesn't keep threading into the crankshaft, I've made a little spacer out of half inch PVC. And what that'll do is just put friction on the crank so then I can spin it. Now I'm just gonna thread the crank bolt back in. butt up against my spacer and that way I can turn the crank to find top dead center. So I've just turned the engine to find top dead center. And you can see on this tooth of the sprocket there's a little dot. So that means this tooth of this sprocket needs to line up with that notch back there. So my, can uh, my crankshaft is in time. And then up here on the camshaft sprocket, this is the left camshaft sprocket. I've got this timing mark matched up with this. And then on the right camshaft sprocket, I've got this timing mark matched up with this timing mark. So now that I've got my timing marks all in alignment, and I've double checked them. I'm gonna take off this tensioner pulley right here. And I'm just gonna loosen it. Now I can take off the timing belt. Okay. 
So the next thing I'm going to take off is the crankshaft sprocket. That's this one right here. And I've already kind of just pulled it off a little bit and it just slides off. So now that I got the crankshaft, crankshaft sprocket off, I'm going to just dust a lot of this gunk off of here because I don't know, I want to clean it up before I do anything else. There's actually one more pulley in the way that I need to remove before I can effectively clean this area, and that's this idler pulley. Now I'm going to take off this piece right here. This is the timing belt auto tensioner. Now just because I'm here, I'm going to remove this section right here. This is a radiator pipe or coolant pipe. And I'm going to take out the thermostat, which is behind here, just so I can check it and make sure it's OK. That's the thermostat right there. This right here, this is the water pump. So I'm gonna take this old one out and put a new one in. Back here, there's actually three more bolts that attach to the water pump, but to get to those, I have to take the fuel rail and the intake manifolds off. So to get the fuel lines off, I think I have to take off these ends right here. And there's one on this side and one over on that side. So that's what it looks like now that I've got the left side out. I'm going to do the right side next. On the right side, there's actually a hose clamp right in here that I can take off to get this gas line off without taking out the screws. Now that I've got the fuel lines disconnected and out of the way, I'm going to undo this bolt, this bolt, there's a bolt back here and a bolt back here to get the fuel rail off.
Okay, so I've got all my bolts unthreaded. Now I'm gonna attempt to lift up this fuel rail assembly. The next thing I'm gonna remove is this thing with the blue tape on it. That's the intake manifold. So now that the intake manifold is off, I can get to this screw right back here. So the water pump actually comes apart into two pieces. There's this side and then the front side. And there's a little screw on the back side to get them apart. So I've got the back of the water pump all cleaned up. Got the gasket surface all cleaned up and smooth. And then this is the new front of the water pump that I'm gonna install. So I've got my gasket with the gasket sealer. I made sure to go around all the holes. I'm going to place it So now I'm going to take two pieces of my water pump I'm going to carefully I've got my gasket all covered with silicone on the edges and I'm going to try and mate it to this surface okay I'm tightening each one gradually. Uh. 
that concludes this part of the series. Don't forget to check the description for more information, and I'll see you in the next part.